This is the Monday month I've been looking forward to. Hello. I don't know if everybody can hear me. Um, but yeah, hello. Hi. We've been going through enough technical difficulties, but this is probably... Uh, I've been excited for this one since I started <laughs> the whole brand. Um, so we're doing our first like official part one of the Kink Slayer Monday Munch sex education, blah, blah, all those things. But before we get started... Pop this up, get the format set, okay, something like that. There you go, we'll play around. Okay, as always, smooth as fucking. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can you feel that, feel that beat? Can you feel that move your feet? Feel the rhythm, new position, ain't no stress in moving me. Put your hands on my body, we ain't gotta tie nobody. Keep on grooving with me, don't stop moving with me. Hello. Okay. You know, we just cut it short. <laughs> As always, nothing can be smooth here. So, hi. Hey, I'm uh, Mr. If you don't know who I am, you should by now. Fueling up for the evening. They might be a new person. How would they know who you are? Well, they should know now. Um, you know, you're not even sure who you are. I, I'm not, but it works out anyway. Mr. Um, Meets trash. That's right. So, tonight is all about the fundamentals, I guess you would say, of sex ed. Um, puberty, anatomy, and reproduction is kind of how it all starts. But... We're not doing like the the health class. You know, everybody say it with me: penis, 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 vagina, penis, vagina, penis. vagina, vagina. Okay. Vagina, vagina. Did you ever watch that movie? Watch the blues. Love that movie. Anyway, <clears throat> on with the fucking show, as always. So let's get on to the introduction to our <laughs> naughty bits. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm having fun. Uh, and then after I present, Jen will be up uh, to talk about. The physical and emotional changes in puberty. And then after that, uh, make sure I'm not fucking this up. It is the menstrual cycle. There are some other words before that that I forgot what they were. So we're just going to go with that. Um, but Bray will be up with the menstrual cycle. And then after that, we'll do some questions. Uh, we'll have Alice, um, if they want to come up. And if Dream shows up, you know, all that stuff. And then we'll do our typical panel at the end. And we'll goof off and discuss things and have bullshit time and all those fun things. But I don't even think I need five whole minutes for an introduction. So wait, I do have a question. Can like they see me? Like not right now. No, this is what I'm saying. Like, does it go away? Hold on. See, I I I left time to fuck off for just a second. Cause I know me. <laughs> Having to, I have learned though, having like new things, and this will apply like even in sex situations. Doing new things always give room for error and time for error. Can you quit touching buttons over there? Me? Yes. I was trying to pull a chat <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to mute this. I'll give you just one second because I got to see how this works. If I disappear, it shouldn't be much of a delay. Hi, Becca. I do see who that chat is. I see it on the live stream there. So I don't know what kind of a delay it is. It's bugging me. I don't know if they can see me or not, but if they can. Okay, they can still see me. All right, fuckers. Let's get started then. The introduction to our naughty bits. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Ew. I had some of that Florida air. Which, Ray, have you had your Florida air today in the back? <laughs> Aw, I love you too. I just got the international symbol for I love you. Boobs. Absolutely boobs. I don't know where boobs are, but boobs. Um, I don't know. Um, so, oh, I'll see the private chat here. Um, I'm not sure, like, so... <laughs> 
So that intro may or may not have had sound. We don't know. We figure all that shit out later. Oh, that was supposed to be a song from our dearest friend. It absolutely yeah. is, by the way. That song is not randomly chosen. Um, the song is called Vibration, and the artist is called I Money. So look it up um, on uh, Spotify right now. All the listen things. to it. Pretend you heard it while our thing was playing but, in the beginning. But with One that, day we'll do this all right, and you don't have to pretend we're really I'm going to find it. a way to mute Princess over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah okay i don't even know what i was saying um yeah so smooth as fucking sand let's just get started how about that let's start with the garden of eden i love that that's my favorite um euphemism for for a vagina and as you can see here the core parts have internal external and then some behind the scenes things um with that we start with the absolute outside which is what most people incorrectly refer to as the vagina which it is not which is half the reason i like get pissed off is because you can't get the basic anatomy right so this is why we do stuff like this so the, the vulva covers all the outside outer parts, um, which would be your labia majora, which if you don't know what that is, that's your, your outer lips. So like your, your fat cat. You know? I don't know how else to explain that. I didn't want to put up stupid illustrations because, you know, who knows what's going to get flagged and what's not. But, but your outer lips, if you have a vagina, then you hopefully know what your outer lips are. Maybe I don't know. Can I get a head nod in the background there from the, the? Do we do we have a general consensus that we know what outer lips means? Not these. Um, your labia minora. Now this is the one. So you'll hear it referred to as an any or an Audi. I've heard it both ways. Um, typically, your mainstream porn stars and stuff like that. Those those images are your any's. They don't have any excess skin or also known as lips, that hang outside of the labia majora. And I can't find the next one. Oh, it's clitoris. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it does exist, <laughs> fellas. It uh, does definitely exist to uh, all people of all sexes and genders. It's not impossible to find. The little man in the boat sits right up top. Um, but that is... My favorite fact about the clit is it is the only organ of the human body that's made purely for pleasure. That's that's a fun fact. Lucky bastards. <laughs> uh, it is all. It is very important though. Uh, the clit is like the. I'll say it's the most important part of the of the whole area, um, and anybody that disagrees with me is probably wrong. So. That's a scientific opinionated fact. Well, we'll call that. That's what I always have. Scientific opinionated facts. Um, so moving on. Trying not to you know take it too serious tonight, but and then you have your your urethral opening. So what a lot of people don't know, and when I say a lot of people, I mean the boys. And when I say the boys, I mean like the me boys. There are two different holes. Girls or vaginas don't, you don't pee out of your vagina. There's a, a separate hole, which I guess is kind of like in there a little bit. So maybe. Some girls don't know that either. Well, okay, you're right. Absolutely. So some girls, yeah, I, I have met I have met people that have had a vagina their entire life that don't know that. Uh, <laughs> so that um, is disappointing to know. I don't know, I'm way more excited to hear you guys talk about your things. <laughs> like y'all have the cool stuff. I've got like so I sit through a class like this in fifth grade. Okay, they put except for they put that shitty little diagram up and was like penis and one that said vagina, and they said if you have a vagina you go this way, if you have a penis you go this way, and then when we got in our class they told us you're gonna start fucking stinking, take a shower, here's some deodorant, and I don't know what happened in the other class so. 
so the outside parts there are mainly six six general parts i mean the the vaginal opening is considered an external part because it's in reference to the actual opening not um like the internals as you'll see here that the internal is hmm, excuse me god i'm so burpy i'm so so smooth tonight um feel free to drop comments and stuff as we go oh okay okay we'll have to tidbit and uh let me know about that after um like when we get all this stuff done because there'll be like something at the end and i'll we'll do some comments and stuff too um i don't know how i missed that one um but we'll we'll figure that shit out in a second Mr.'s reading comments from backstage. Anybody who doesn't know? Yeah, so you don't, if you don't know, now you know. And you'll know later. Okay. All right, so what I will, I will actually cover that one real quick. So since that is absolutely a super important part of the next one, or not the next one, but the vagina. To anybody that has a vagina, hopefully you know that the inside of it is your vagina. That is the, the canal that connects from the vulva to the uterus. There's like a, it can be, can we like get over the whole loose and tight thing being related to sexual partners and how many you've had? Absolutely. It's all about muscles and muscle control and all those fun things. What did I say? The uter I did say. You see, I love it. I love it. I'm about to just say, "Fuck it." We're gonna have a full panel <laughs> because I know these things. I just don't say them the right way. Um, fuck it. Let's roll. You want to do it? Let's let's roll back to the munch. It's completely up to you here. Let's fucking roll with it. That's what we do best. Because it's what we do best. Fuck yeah. Let's do this. Hello. Hello. Hi, we're here. <laughs> I'm glad we're here. Okay. Because I mean, I know quite a bit about the, the, the vaginal area. I just left some of it out. And to be honest, it's because I'm a shitty person and I procrastinate and my slides got done in like an hour and a half before we started. <laughs> so I have them in notes. I just don't have them on the slides because you know? I, I am going to ask probing questions when we get to the point to prove that. Absolutely. And that, that's, that's, that's part of the fun of it is to, to be able to, to have these conversations. Oh, and by the way, I hope day six is listening because I did learn that conversating is a fucking word. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Why do I always get corrected? Day six. I hope you hear this. I miss you. <laughs> mm. So we've explored the vagina. There's parts in the vagina we'll get to later. Um, different spots, which is fun. There's a, uh, I don't know what it's short for, but like they call it the A spot, which is like almost the, the opposite end of the G spot, which does exist as a matter of fact. Like it's so I feel so bad because I have to tell like people in my real life that these things exist. You know, like it's not like some bullshit. <laughs> Foreplay matters. You know, the G spot's real. The clit exists, and sometimes you can have an enlarged clit. You can have a clit that sticks out like a little penis because, as we can cover in another thing with babies and all that such. Um, we all start out as is would it be anatomically female or anatomically female yeah yeah I mean, we all start out as an asshole which is my favorite part i just never <laughs> developed um did you know no that? no give yourself some credit you developed into a larger asshole okay yeah, i grew i just didn't <laughs> develop <laughs> i developed but didn't grow whatever you want to put um <clears throat> probing is fun Okay, now I can get out of the quiet private chat there. So, I did turn off like the viewer thing tonight, which is nice because I don't know how many people are fucking watching. That's great. Um, 
I, I wanted that just because I don't have that expectation. None of none of us do. I don't know if you guys ever see it or not, but but the, I've got flyers all over the fucking place for this. So we'll see. It's probably like just Rebecca still, and that's okay. As if anybody is here, say hello in the comments. Absolutely. We always this love This is a here. learning experience for all of us, as I've said several times during lunch. This is what mm -hmm. our lunch is about, is us being able to grow and discuss these topics together. Yeah. So if anybody wants to pass on the word to Dream that we're going to just do the panel thing for tonight, um, please feel free. That's fine. It might be just Becca. That's okay. I'll let him know. Um, so to the cervix, um, the official word is a longer word. Endo endocervical canal. Um, located on each end. If you don't know, the cervix is in the very back of the vagina. Typically, I think it can be like there can be mutations where it's misplaced. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you can have you can have more than one cervix. You can have more than one uterus. It's kind of all kind of fun things you can malfunction and do. Pretty yeah. neat. I had a stepsister that had two two uteruses. And when she was pregnant, she had to be careful not to get pregnant again, which is crazy. See, that's where the... that's That counterbalances the clit. <laughs> Pregnancy counterbalances the clit automatically. Um... Periods too. Periods too. That's why we get a button. I, I wanna I wanna just real quick, Jen, I get periods. I don't have a clit. It sucks. Oh that's I sucks. am sorry. <laughs> oh that's, that's <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> it's awful. So I right, um so the importance of the cervix is to one, um when you do get pregnant, it plugs up and it stops, it helps you ladies well we'll cover that later um the the vagina bleeds and all those fun things expel but uh, that will be raised forte shortly so we're not going to dive too deep into that i'm i'm more in the anatomy we're just laying lay give you a layout of the land um so the cervix you have your your canal um the cervical os is on both sides the opening i'm i'm not sure if it's short for anything or if it's just os it's os Os. Okay. Internal and external cervical os are the the openings and membranes between the ends of the cervix and like the vagina or the uterus. Very nice. Important to know that those are there and that they're stretchy membranes because if you're too big and you have a, a partner, you can tear those. Mm -hmm. and it's not a great time. Mm -hmm. You can bruise the fuck out of your cervix too. Mm -hmm. Though that's usually a good time. And it's a good time until later. It doesn't feel good later. <laughs> it cannot feel good at the moment. It just depends, you know. But <laughs> it depends on your personal preference. Right. There's no preference that's wrong. <laughs> just to be clear. Exactly. But there are some things you may not enjoy if you have different preferences. Right. So your external os is near the vagina, so it's closer to the the opening and then your internal is closer to your uterus. So when you look at like a, a diagram or you picture the cervix, the os is the opening in the cervix. It's what seals up in a sense when women get pregnant. Yeah, the with the with the the mucus plug and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Jen loves talking about babies and pregnancies. Yucking. <laughs> <laughs> um that's next week. See, I keep wanting to talk about things. I'm like, nope, that's next week. Nope, that's next week. Um, there's something I did see, something about cervical stenosis. A narrowing or occlusion of the internal cervical os. Os? Is it os you said or os? Os. Os. Um, but it says asymptomatic and can cause um, infertility. Basically, just means the internal one closes up. Huh. Well, that's that's doesn't sound like a bad problem to have. <laughs> it can it's increase the pregnancy problem. because it can okay. limit. Okay. You just have a. <laughs> <laughs> what well, was that, right? 
it can interfere with getting pregnant because if the opening is too closed, the swimmers can't swim through it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And it can also make periods fucking awful if they can't get it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah, yeah. And, and thank you, love. <laughs> I love. Ray, the hair does look pretty fucking great. I might be a little biased with dark blue green hair, you know, you know, but it looks really great. <laughs> it's, it's a fade between green, blue, and black. Ooh. Mm. So we've made it through the cervix. We're in the uterus. So that is where the worst part of being having a vagina or a uterus um, is so every month as you'll learn later the lining is shed it does not sound fun it doesn't sound fun if that makes any of y'all feel better basically okay. like once a month the uterus gets pissed off because it doesn't have a baby that it wants so it throws a temper tantrum rips down all the walls and shoves itself out <laughs> <laughs> That does not sound fun. So we've we've made it to the uterus, um, and now we're going to go into the fallopian tubes, which I did learn is only about four inches or so. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like long. Like the, the 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 images and graphs you see, like they make them look like super long, like big old but, fucking noodles. Right, but they're they're not. They're like this long, like that. A lot, of diagrams, a, a lot of diagrams are not proportionally correct. And a lot of the diagrams don't, they don't even have like the cervix as a canal with different parts. They just have, oh, here's a line of muscle. And that's right. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll describe the best way I've seen it. Like in, in most of these draw, drawings and stuff, it almost looks like just like the end of a hot dog with a hole in it. And that's like how all of them are depicted. <laughs> yeah. So. In all fairness, a lot of diagrams are drawn not proportionally correct, so it's easier to see the information that's on them. Okay. Okay. I mean, that makes sense too. You want them to, you know, you want to be able to, to see the important parts. Um, and since I do have presumptuous, presump presuming on my end, the the two commenters there are vagina having people so feel free to chime in and correct interesting interesting um, and then we move on to the fimbriae which is kind of wild because like it's like little uh i think of uh anemones in the sea like little Little phalanges that help move, like, we're kind of going backwards, but we're working our way through. I don't have these lined up at all for some reason. I don't even have fucking ovaries on here. See? <laughs> those aren't, those don't exist either. <laughs> I wish. Right. <laughs> um, so your ovary puts out eggs. Um, if you don't know, your ovaries have a limited number of eggs. And no one knows, like, there's no set number. It's not like you're born with, like, 16,000 and that's it. Every person is different. Um, some are born with very few. Some are born with some and can still get knocked up when they're in their 80s. So, that's a fun little fact that we all start off as a little microscopic little thing. The egg is the only cell that's visible, like, to the naked eye, if I'm not mistaken. It's the only technical cell of the human body that's visible to the, to the naked eye. Um, if you were to see it, you could see it without a microscope. That's interesting, is it? Because you can't see, like, sperm cells are too small. Right. Blood cells are too small. But an egg is just big enough to be visible. Someone fact check that, okay, please. Okay, though. okay, okay, okay. I, I actively am. Um, so, like, so did you wear the the human ovum measures approximately uh looks like 120 mm, picometers in diameter 
which is um, 0.0047 inches. It's just big enough for our eyes to be able to see it. It's like a grain of sand almost. Thereabouts, yeah. That's crazy. So when do I lay these eggs? <laughs> Once a month. <laughs> We'll discuss ovulation and all those fun things shortly, too. Um, so let's keep on rolling through the, <laughs> the uterine lining. We talked about that a minute ago. Endometrium. So endometriosis is when your uterus is inflamed. Am I wrong, right? Is that correct? It's when the endometrium is inflamed. Exactly. Uh, that, is, that is a separate organ structure that is inside the uterus rather than being part of the uterus right that's what's right. that's what's actually shed off mm -hmm. in the period. that's why some periods are so painful um, yes. because yeah i couldn't imagine that it, it can be inflamed um in some people like pieces of it actually tear and cause scar tissue on the actual uterus and the scar tissue can even build up outside of the uterus interesting See, that, that's, that's not a, that's not a good time though. Like, and I, there's not I, much that can be done, right? Not not a whole lot. Um, I have of, pretty severe endometriosis. <clears throat> so outside of like a hysterectomy, there's not much that can be done. Not really. Um, sometimes some hormonal therapies will help slow progression, um, but it's just kind of one of those well fuck <laughs> type. And of I'll. <laughs> I'll research it a little bit next week. Um, for next week, at least, I know that some birth controls can help with it, like you said, because of the hormones. But um, they can help slow the progression, but they will not. They will not help any scar tissue that's already there heal, mm. um, and it won't make it go away completely. It can make the symptoms go away. Ouch. Your, your best bet to minimize or get rid of symptoms would be a full-on hysterectomy. Yes. Which I have been fighting for for years. That, I don't know. That just does not sound like a... I, I've known a few women that have it, like like from personal relationships, and mm -hmm. it's, it's awful. I almost would bet that you have to deal with that because... I don't think I could survive a period. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm I am I'm a word it the way I'm gonna word it. I'm mad enough to admit I could not survive a period. I'm not that tough. <laughs> there are um there are these like elect like electronical stim pads that mm -hmm. you can get with controllers that emulate period pains. And I would be very amused to see you try to do anything so with them good. active. Oh man. I'm down to try one one day. Uh, <laughs> I've watched videos of like men trying those, and it's like they're like, "Fuck that!" And then they try the pregnancy ones, which is even more intense, and it's like, "Fuck that!" I'm good. <laughs> so my two favorite parts of the whole behind-the-scenes section is the Bartholin's gland and the Skeen's gland. Hey, hey! So if you're uh, if you've got that WAP, you probably have an overactive. One of these is overactive, um, which is not a bad thing. Um, somebody let Ben Shapiro know that's not bad. But the Bartholin's gland is near the opening, and that's what causes lubrication. So when you start to get a little wet, that gland's getting active. We'll get in later in this uh, slide series that kind of is a process in the, the body's response to sex. And the skein's gland is located on the inside of the, the vaginal wall and is often, or they haven't done enough research on it yet. So when it comes to like squirting, that is potentially one of the contributing parts of the body. Go ahead. So the skein's glands are functionally analogous to the seminal vesicles in male anatomy. And that that is like actually where that comes from. Most of the time it comes from either overactive skein's glands or extensively stimulated skein's glands. Right. And a lot of people think it, now it does have components of urine, but that's why a lot of people think it's pee because like 
it can. It's so does semen. I mean, right. You know what I'm saying? So like it's, it's pieces of it. It's kind of like the whole argument that Adderall is almost meth. It's there's there's enough components that are different that makes it not. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ah. <laughs> uh, do you guys like my little abstract diagram here? <laughs> this is a penis. Uh, the, the 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 whole thing about the penis is is fairly cut and dry it's a, it's a penis um it serves two purposes for urination and and sexual reproduction i can't think of any other purposes it may have a helicopter it does helicopter that is correct it is an accessory a fashion accessory um, <laughs> um then you have the scrotum <clears throat> which is what actually holds the balls the testicles the testes and then once you move inside of there, then you get into the testes, um, which is where all the, the stuff is produced. And I'm pretty sure, uh, I think it was 600 feet, but the the vesicles inside of there can be up to 600 feet. That's, that's a lot of tubage. To put it in perspective, a football field is 300 feet. So you have enough tubes in there. Which does not sound uh, physically possible, but not, you know, people way smarter than me that have studied that know this. They're extremely thin, so it's no. like six hundred feet of like the finest thread you've ever seen. Oh, okay. okay, I can see that. <laughs> and oh god, epididymis. I can never get that one right. Epididymis, yeah. Okay. So that's the, the tube structure where the sperm matures and becomes like stored. Mm -hmm. Contrary um, to popular belief, you don't store pee in your balls. <laughs> the epididymis can also form cysts in the same way that a woman's ovaries can, and mm -hmm. it is a bitch. Ooh, mm -mm. That does not sound fun. Um, so, yeah. No. There, cysts, are, um, um, there are three different structures inside the epididymis and each one of them can have its own cysts that's terrible mm -hmm. i'm tired of learning about sex ed now <laughs> <laughs> at, at the risk of oversharing i have one on the epididymal head on the left one and it's been a bitch consistently for Ooh. like a year and a half at this point that that, that i feel for you i really do it's gonna get cut off eventually so it's fine right 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 so you know eventually you get your revenge but mm -hmm. The vas deferens. Like this is the, this is the part that gets snipped when there's a vasectomy, um, which is, despite what people think, it's a pretty permanent procedure. Um, to it, it can undo itself, but to have the operation reversed is a lot more invasive and a lot more complicated than to just have it snipped off and clamped. True. So. And it's not in this exact part, uh, but if you have a vasectomy, make sure you clean the pipes enough and then get your your checkup done to make sure your sperm count is gone mm -hmm. before you just start, you know, fulfilling cream pie fantasies. Because mm -hmm. you will still end up with a child. <laughs> Possibly. If, if proper follow-up is not done, it is still entirely possible to fully bake the cream pies. <laughs> it's a mess. I love it. Oh. Um, we we kind of talked about the seminiferous tubules. That's what we were talking about a second ago, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. another section of it. Mm -hmm. um, seminal vesicles. That's how things. That's uh, that's the fluid. So that's what kind of helps. Things get flowing. It uh, builds that structure of what all is in your your semen. Uh, I don't think I have. I skipped over the prostate gland because that's like to me that's not in that part yet. Like that's more. I back. I will challenge you on that one. It's just, it's a little more. For, it's a little further back. You know, like like we're getting there. I'm just still like in the testicles. <laughs> 
and I know it's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked for it. It's not there. So, um, if you have a penis, it is, you can get wet the same way that a vagina can. Um, when you get turned on, you get excited, you start to feel all that stuff your body's supposed to do when you when you get turned on. You can have an excess from the Cooper's gland, not the Cowper's gland. Fun fact. I said that wrong for a long time. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's spelled Cowper's. Right. That was yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that gets overactive, kind of like um, the Skeen's gland does, and the bar the bar Bartholin gland gets overactive and makes things wetter. Um, you can't have an excess of of call it what it is, pre ejaculate fluid, pre cum is what everybody knows it as. And, and that's a good time. The ejaculatory ducts are where the seminal vesicles and the vas deferens join. So this is where things kind of make their way out. And the urethra is the exit port where your end semen can pass through and blood if you're, if you're hurt. <laughs> um, one rare deformity that people can have when they're born is called hypospadias. It's a neat one. It lets me do my fun party tricks. Um, it's where your urethra comes out the bottom instead of the end like it's supposed to. And yes, Lab, the prostate is stored in the balls. <laughs> Please. No. Good. No, dear God, it's not. Um, it's okay. Um, but yeah, that, that hypospadias thing was, was it made for fun stories because I still have a scar around the head. So I can mm -hmm. always tell people that I had some taken off. And I've got <laughs> a scar to prove it. <laughs> um, but that it's it's kind of rare. Just a second. One in every two hundred babies is born with it, so it's, it's not terrible. I mean, you know, the first surgery I couldn't walk for like a year. Also, <laughs> I have a fistula there that happens rarely, and now I can pee out of two holes. It's kind of fun. That's my party trick. <laughs> It took, me, it took me a minute to process the not walking for a year thing. You uh, I had three total surgeries. They tried to fix it when I was first born. They tried again when I was three. They, what they did, they went through different development stages because they knew that it would retract more. So, you know, that immediately after I was born, so they could get things kind of lined up. And when I was three, I had grown a little bit and started to, to get things in line where they were supposed to be and then you know when i was 11 like as i was in the peak of that puberty stage i had to have it again i remember that one and that was the worst like it, i had to pee like so much before i could leave and i could not like i wanted to cry every time it was it was rough you ever got a paper cut and spilled vinegar on your lemon juice you know imagine that around your pecker <laughs> good times, good times. Uh, but makes for good stories now. Before and finally, we move off of this slide. What is it? Before we move off of this slide, uh -huh. I, I want to mention another part that's actually part of the penile structure is the suspensory ligament. Mm -hmm. um, anyone who has a penis that can get erect will be able to follow a, a ligament across the top of it from mm -hmm. their pelvis to the head. And Pretty. that is more or less the only part of your body that actually determines what your penis shape looks like. Um, so whether it's curved or... Whether it's curved, whether it's straight, how flexible it is during. And that is a muscle that can be worked out, stretched, extended in all the ways that you could work on flexibility and other muscles. So internal yoga, I got you. So while it's in there, start doing stretches. Or, you know, in, in theory, theory, find someone who is able and willing and just shove it at an angle that it bends yeah that's what i'm saying you know you just like do some yoga while you're up in there 
Um, and finally, the prostate gland. Um, if you are of Christian belief and the way that, you know, gays are born to die and go to hell and all that stuff, that's God's cruelest joke is to put the male G spot in all right, the butthole. All right, mister, I got to correct you real quick. Please do. Straight fucking men can enjoy prostate stimulation too. No, absolutely. That wasn't what I was saying. I, I didn't mean that at all. I was just saying, you know, with that super Christian belief of, you know, putting stuff in your butt means you're going to hell. God said, I'm going to put the magic button in there and we're going to leave it there. There's nothing you can do about it. But absolutely, straight men should, can and should enjoy prostate play. You guys remember, was it American Pie? Milk in the prostate? Mm -hmm. Was that American Pie? I'm pretty sure Maybe. American Pie, too. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, it was, because Stifler loved that shit. That's all he wanted. Um, either way, such a fun series. But the prostate gland is is very interesting because you can tell, um, you can find symptoms when something's wrong without having to actually go to a doctor. You would need to go to a doctor and get checked out again, but um, it can cause um, a lack of control of your bladder, um, sexual dysfunction, like, like so many things can happen to it that it gives you some clues like, hey, something's wrong here. Oh, and before we move off of the anatomy part here, uh, testicular torsion is like the devil. I've never experienced it. I don't know anybody that has, but I read about it. It's where your ball gets twisted. Mm -hmm. And you can lose that testicle if you don't act quick enough. But either way, it requires surgery to fix. Uh-uh. Not a good time. There's also a, a couple more anatomical pieces I want to mention before Go we move for off. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in the actual shaft around your urethra, you have, uh, I get the names pulled up here, uh, the corpus spongiosum, which is like the, the spongy structure, but it's a smaller structure specifically designed to protect the urethra from the rest of the corpus, which is the corpus cavernosus or cavernosa which is the part that fills with blood and makes things hard. Absolutely. So you have um, the two of those in one of the corpus spongios spongiosum in your shaft. And the, the spongiosum specifically protects the, the tube that everything comes out and then the rest makes you hard. And oh, yeah. those can break. When they're filled with blood, all of those can break. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking awful. I've known a friend of mine to break his stick and it was not a good time uh they can also bruise and tear without fully breaking mm -hmm. and they're you don't want any of that to happen mm -hmm. i still remember that i like didn't hear from her from a day or two and then i called him i was like hey you good he's like yep just been laying in bed and i'm like what happened are you okay he's like i tore my dick she was on top she came out a little she came up a little too high so things shifted just right to that pelvic bone and it some some things don't bend 90 degrees. Oh. <laughs> That's the reaction I had too. That sounded just like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I did want to cover this one, um, which gets overlooked a lot in, in sex ed um, intersex people. So that's when people are born with either reproductive or sexual anatomy that differs from the typical definition of male or female. We discussed this on a month one day where they have like uh, a measuring tool to, to where they determine the, the sex of the child, you know, if they're going to be a male or female and all that stuff, it's really kind of fucked up. Um, just of course my opinion there. Crap, what is that little tool called? And it's very... The pecker poker, you just like... Anyways, carry on with your little presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's see. The fallow meter. Yeah. It is a legitimate tool um, that I'm pretty certain is still in use today. Um, so... 
it's okay so it's it's a measurement of uh it's like a three and a quarter inch ruler and anything above one inch they classify as it's a boy anything between a half uh looks like maybe three eighths of an inch to an inch is unacceptable to have surgery on either way has to develop naturally to find out which way it leans and then anything under that three eighths inch is a, a girl go ahead uh, that unacceptable range isn't unacceptable to have surgery on it's unacceptable surgery is required oh wow okay thank you for clearing that up because the little the little thing i have there look like it's meaning yeah. like yeah we're not going to do surgery we'll let the ship ride it out and figure out how it works that's that's what should happen that's the ethical thing to do rather than trying to predetermine a child's gender and force oh. surgery to affirm that. Look at me choosing the ethical way for once. On accident, even better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 1.7% 1. of the population is estimated to have uh, intersex traits. That would be over 130 million people worldwide. I don't know how accurate that number is anymore. I mean, I know the 1.7 is roughly, they say it's in anywhere between 1.5 and 2%. So a lot of people. And I didn't want to do a slide on all of the different diagnosable intersex variations, but there are over 40 of them. Is it Kleinfelter? Is that that's the uh, XYY or XXY? It's one of the two. I think it's XXY. Yeah, so that's like uh, so. A lot of it comes down to either you could have a micro penis, you could have the androgen sen insensitivity. So is now how would that one be explained? I never looked that one up. Like I said, I I had my notes. I just never got them laid androgen out. Androgen insensitivity. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's a less than expected reaction to your androgen hormones, your testosterone, um, the masculinizing effects of like high levels of endocrine or high levels of epinephrine in your body. Um, when those levels are higher, how your body responds to cortisol also changes. And none of those are happening if you have androgen insensitivity. Um, a lot of the time, androgen insensitivity will come with higher than should be expected or higher than healthy levels of testosterone as your body's trying to trigger that reaction. Huh. That's interesting. Cause at first it sounded like you, like I was picturing in my head, like a physically non-binary person, you know, not necessarily identifying as non-binary, but appearing completely non-binary. If that makes sense. I'm not sure if that's how that works, but that's just what I pictured in my head for just a minute. Um, not really. Most people who are, should have androgen sensitivity and sh should, would be expected to present or identify as masculine, still look masculine and still have that insensitivity. Um, huh. it usually ends up causing some, some organ issues, like some kidney and liver issues, because your body has too much testosterone that it has to work through. Huh. Interesting. It can cause atypical chromosomes, uh, atypical gonads, genitals, hormones, and more. They don't fit like in the binary category um, of either leaning, you know, male or female presenting. There was a, oh, fuck. I think it's Come As You Are. The author of that book is Intersex. It's kind of neat. I'm pretty sure it's Come As You Are. It's one of the sex books I've read. But either way, Come As You Are is a good book too. Intersex people also face issues like unwanted surgery as infants, um, a stigma of looking or appearing one way, um, high rates of assault and mental illness, which is kind of interesting. I imagine the, the external factors hurt more than the internal um, when it comes to the, the mental illnesses and the, the stuff like that. I like this quote. I don't know where I found it. It was in my notes somewhere may not even be a real quote it just sounded cool where i found it so somebody said it somewhere on the internet i guess what says to be intersex means to if, if nobody claims it it's mine to be 
Intersex means to live on the edge of everything, man, woman, legal, illegal, real and unreal, accepted and and unacceptable. There's an extra word in there that shouldn't be. But, yeah. Wrong button. Oh, I know, right? I'm so good at this. All right, so now we're in the body process of preparing for sex. What well, my typos? <laughs> um, so this is kind of like a it's, a, it's a simplified version of what happens to your body. Your brain gets the signals for erotic thoughts, sights, smells, touches, fantasies, all that stuff to, to make everything else get, get in line. Um, we've got a job to do kind of thing. And it turns on the machine. And then the blood goes where it needs to go. Your breathing changes. Like you're not going to start hyperventilating, hopefully, because I, I think that might kill the mood. But maybe. I don't know. It maybe. depends on the people. Right. You know, maybe. But, you know, you're going to... You're going to breathe a little bit heavier, a little bit faster, which also comes with your body flushing with the blood and all that stuff. It almost acts like a, a simple exercise. So your body's trying to, to ramp up its blood flow and all that stuff. The nipples becoming a right thing. I wasn't quite sure about cause like not everybody experiences that. I just know that the, the smooth muscles are what, you know, help everything get a little harder there. I'm not certain for, for like myself when I get turned on, my nipples don't get hard. I know like a lot of women I've been with when they get turned on, their nipples get hard. It looks usually looks different in, uh, I'm going to say testosterone dominated bodies. Uh -huh. um, it's less that same hard that women get and more smaller and like drawn into themselves. Okay. Like their their surface area gets smaller and they get tighter rather than harder. Right, my nipples are useless, so I don't like them. I don't look at them. I don't even know what they look like most of the days. So then your lubrication increases, your glands start to to secrete and do all the things, and this is when you start getting wet um, in that in that form. Plasma, we forgot plasma. We didn't talk much about that in the the glands thing, but. There is some plasma down there. It's a good time. Can you donate that plasma? No. Oh, fuck. Okay. I mean, I had a thought for a second. I was like, <laughs> much more fun plasma donation. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, that's that's simply to, to help reduce, you know, friction. You don't want to go in dry. If you don't naturally have lubrication, use lube. I was about to chime in with that. Yep. We've got silicone based, you got water based, you got spit if you're in a rut, you know, like there's all kind of things that you can use. Um, but try like the actual, like the, the actual lubricants first before the spit thing. That only worked in like Brokeback Mountain. So, which is a great movie, by the way. And I thought about a reboot for it, we'll discuss later. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm getting that look for you. I love it. I know, <laughs> I know. I know. I say stupid shit when I get that look from you. Yeah, because you, you hear this stuff all day. Stupid shit. Uh, and then you have muscle tension. Um, a fun trick that I learned back in my teenage days: um, if if you're getting an unwanted erection, you can tighten your legs, like your thighs, and it'll help divert that blood flow, and it'll help not deal with that go for it alice not if you're a bottom well fuck <laughs> there's always exceptions to the rules always exceptions to the rules that is that is peak bottom behavior and it does not remove blood from that's, the area that's interesting though because i know like i know it helps it, it almost re-diverts the blood but i guess if you've if you've uh, conditioned yourself in that way, I guess it would absolutely have the the adverse effect. Or been conditioned by someone else for what it's worth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The involuntary contraction of the muscles, like the sphincter, increase tension throughout the body. 
you start getting the uh, little, little brown eye wink. Let's see. Ah, see, I didn't leave that stuff out. I knew I didn't leave it out. We just hadn't got there yet. <laughs> you were saying those words, and I was like, I had this. I knew they were there. What? Carry on. I'm Carry listening. On. Oh, so vaso congestion. Erections occur during vaso congestion. Is it vaso or vaso? Or does it matter? I don't think it matters. The engorgement of the erectile tissues with blood, art, art, arteries, arteries widen and smooth muscles relax, allow rapid blood flow into the penis. The corpora cavernosa. So this is essentially a natural cock ring. It's one way to think of it. It helps trap the blood flow to keep things stiffened up and good to go. Gotcha, we are. And then the parasympathetic nervous stuff. Uh, uh, the, yeah, words. See, I put too much science -y stuff in here, and it throws me off. Erections are triggered by parasympathetic nervous system activation, which initiates vasodilation and smooth muscle relaxation in the penis. Neural signals result in sexual stimuli. Ta-da. That's how erections happen. I'm ready. I'm ready for all this. We just I just went out of order. <laughs> so I'm way over my time though. You're way over your time. I'm way over my time. All right, let's mm -hmm. let's bust through this shit. Okay. So blood flows to the pelvic area, cause lubricated plasma to seep into the engorged vaginal blood vessels. Which causes the Bartholin's gland located near the vaginal opening to secrete mucus to provide thicker, more substantial lubrication. The Skeen's gland starts to secrete near the lower end of the urethra, produced by the thinner, slipperier fluid that adds to the lubrication mixture. And that's why it catches, so the, the squirting thing, that's why it catches the stuff that has the makeup of urine, is because it's right there, so close to the urethra. High arousal leads to increased production of the cervical mucus, which helps retain moisture in the vagina and reduce friction. Extra moisture comes from sweat glands and seepage from the vaginal wall tissues. Like it's all, all shit works down there together. And then the end, this, the big ovation, the standing ovation. I was going to put like the laying ovation, but it just didn't sound as good. Um, <laughs> It's okay that you're running over. I'm going to do mine tomorrow or something. Are there any go. questions? You didn't you do slide. anything on that slide. You missed <laughs> the, the title and like moved on. Take your time with the big ovation, please, mister. <laughs> I'll always take my time with that. Thank you. Take your time. but And then we'll have Ray Yeah, go, I think Ray's and is then pretty fucking important. You're, you'll have time. I would like to have the opportunity to just fix my slides because they were not proper. <laughs> I put way. a lot of work into them. Okay. And they're set up. They're ready to go. All right. So ejaculation represents the crescendo of the male arousal as semen propulsion smacks the height of sexual pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> as the moment nears, the prostate seminal vessels load the urethral bulb. Did you know that semen can can and often does come out at around 28 miles per hour? Mm -hmm. That's why it's illegal in the school zone. Good God. I... <laughs> <laughs> Mister. I'm not wrong. Um, <laughs> what you got, Alice? <laughs> There's um, the... S smacks the heights of sexual pleasure is a little prescriptive um, for a lot of penis havers. Um, the time after ejaculation is the the height, the, the ride back down in the way that vagina havers usually tend to enjoy the ride down just as much as hitting the L. Oh, yeah. See, I like the the ascension. I've always felt like, like that was more my personal you know, like it's it's the way up for me 
Mm-hmm. And then after it's done, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Let's, let's carry on, watch TV, eat snacks, take a shower, whatever we got to do. Yeah, but even before HRT, I could go like five or six times back to back to back. So like there was no one that was like, bam, and everything's over. Fucking lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 good. Like that's that's it. You got yours a few times. I got mine. <laughs> yeah. Like playing soccer, three to one. So while well, uncommon, so this there's actually a statistic out that is a factual statistic, but it's so widely used, like it makes no fucking sense. So the statistics say, um. Between ten percent and sixty nine percent of women experience squirting. So between ten percent and sixty nine percent, and that's a consistent scale. I have seen it say twenty seven percent to like sixty nine percent somewhere in there, but yeah, you know, that's that's such a wide range. And I wonder if they're taking into effect the some actually just pee. Because some do, some think that they're squirting when they pee, like or they pee when they squirt, whatever. It's also a matter of a lot of vagina owning humans are they. It's not accurately reported. A lot are embarrassed and report inaccurately in either direction. Right. I could see that too. I I don't have a way to provide anything more concrete than like the studies statistics, but um, every single vagina having partner I've ever had has been able to. Right. I've, I've never had that issue either. It seems to be a common thing, you know, like it's, I don't know. I don't know, it's there's all kind of stats that I hear. I'm just like, but all of mine have. <laughs> there, there are also a lot that, can at some points in their lives and not at other not in others um it's the human body is a fascinating thing that all kinds of things can go different directions with it helps if you hydrate mm-hmm. you should be hydrating anyway if you're going to do sex hydrate that's right if you're going to do sex, hydrate. Do sex hydrate. hydrate or die straight okay <laughs> oh i love that one too damn it I drink some oh water. god i love it <sighs> Um, so one thing I did find, so the leading theories, like I, I did my research, I, I've, I've done my research on this for more than this, but <laughs> <clears throat> the actual scientific theory is that the skein's gland being connected to the urethra is what makes it shoot out. You have a propulsion behind it for that reason. Whereas some don't, some that have that overactive skein's gland, it just kind of oozes out. But it's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's nice. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! Gush, gushers. I loved gushers as a kid. I still love gushers. See, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Just a different kind. This is not fair. So some have claimed it's an anatomical identity, similar erectile tissues as the penis, the glands, the analogs to the prostate. The skeptics remain. Portions, nerve supply. What the fuck did I write there? I missed like half of that. Like, there's more to that sentence. I don't know where the fuck it's at. So we're gonna skip that part. Uh. uh I, I, you want to read it? It doesn't make sense. No, to me. I Any, don't want to read it. Can anybody no. decipher that? No. I can't even see it. I'm just gonna say, do better, Miss. <laughs> All right. So it says some have claimed its anatomical identity, similar erectile tissues as the penis, glands. Analogous to the prostate. Ah, I think I'm talking about the skein's gland seal. Uh, but skeptics mm-hmm. remain. It's proportions, nerve supply, exact location. Still challenged cartographers and uncharted terrains of desire. Oh, nope, that's the G spot. I remember writing that now. Like, it's elusive. I don't know why it's so elusive. Like, people act <laughs> like it doesn't exist. All right. All right. It's not, it's not elusive. You know how you find it? Go in and come here. <laughs> Literally, the come hither gesture. There's mm-hmm. like a ridge, spongy section there. You can feel the. You start dip. touching it, and it like fills and like erects. Right? And that's that's the thing people don't understand. You can feel the difference in the tissue. Exactly. Um, 
if your if your member or your fingers are long enough to do so, the A spot does the same thing. Absolutely, it's way back there. It depends on the partner. Some people have a very shallow cervix. True, true. But that's why they say like so double double penetration is more pleasurable for that reason because you're able to easily stimulate that area mm. from from all the angles. Are there any questions? I think we've answered all the questions. Well, you've answered the questions of the people on the panel. Yeah. The, the so. people watching might have questions. Do the people watching have questions? Yes, Lav, you do. Are you ready, Ray? Oh, I, sure, yeah. Are you? Like, yeah, go for like, it. This, this is out of my element. All right. Let's get you to the beginning. There we go. Way out so. of my own. It's like you got <laughs> this. Uh, I do have them so, in the right order, though. So. I don't know. I can't see the top of it. So cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want uh, us to uh, come off of the screen so you can be? It'll be bigger no, for you. No, no. Okay. I'm good. Um, fuck. I <laughs> I had this practice and now I'm on the spot and now I'm awkward. So. Uh, Jump in and save me, anyone. So the phase is the first phase, right? Yeah, that. Thanks. <laughs> so that's like um, day one. Yes, the menstrual phase. Um, it starts when you start your period, and it, it marks the beginning of the cycle. Um, I can't read that. So it happens so, because. It happens because your uterus is pissed off. No, pretty, pretty much. I mean, pretty much. The the egg from the previous cycle is still yes. there. The, the egg from the previous cycle is still there, and the body doesn't need that lining anymore because there's no pregnancy for it to support. So it gets rid of it. <laughs> and next, you've got where it talks about the levels of hormones, estrogen and proestrogen dropping. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> estrogen and progesterone. Yeah, Mister, wanna... I've said that word enough times in front of you. I will fight you. I don't even know what I said. Pro uh, proestrogen or sure. progesterone? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Ray, would you like me to help you with reading these? Um, Please. I was going to say, like, I can't read it from here. I did take my glasses off. That um, might have something to do with it. It's really <laughs> small. It is. I, I'm on a computer screen, and it's not small to me, so I'll read them for you. Thank you. Uh, levels of the hormones estrogen and progesterone drop, telling the body that the lining of the uterus isn't needed. The uterine lining is then shed and exits the body through the vagina. This is where the blood and tissue of a period comes from. Luck. Thank you. And, and estrogen and progesterone are the two hormones I take to feminize through HRT which means I'm constantly at the high end of a cycle. And then once a month, they just drop. Ugh. Mm. That has to be hell. Yeah, it's awful. I and mean, it gets real hard to think when you get turned on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> the, the follicular phase. The follicular phase? Say that three times fast. Go, go ahead, Alice. Thank you. I'll jump in and explain in between, but if you don't mind. Sure. The follicular phase. This is the longest phase of the cycle, lasting from 14 to 21 days. It lasts from menstruating to ovulation. During this phase, the fluid-filled sacs in the ovaries house immature eggs. The pituitary gland releases follicle-stimulating hormone, causing the follicles to produce estradiol. These hormones become the biggest and healthiest egg or cause the biggest and healthiest egg to become fully mature and ready to be released. The end of this phase is particularly fertile, meaning pregnancy is likely to occur with intercourse. So real quick side note, because this is munch and we do that. When I was trying to make that slide, uh, my phone kept auto-correcting uh, <laughs> pregnancy to Pensacola. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, if you have sex with your fertile Pensacola occurs. <laughs> so essentially, so your your ovaries choose the egg. It's like okay, this this one appears to be the best one that um, needs to go. The the hormone receptive structures choose the egg inside yes. the ovaries. They choose the egg based on the biggest and healthiest one, so the one that is most likely to develop into the healthiest pregnancy. Huh. I am not a brody chicken, and I will poop all my eggs out and let you eat them if you want. <laughs> that sounded way grosser than what it is. I was talking about chickens. And me being a chicken. I'm so sorry, y'all. So now this... So this is like when you're most likely to get pregnant? Um, the last few days of the follicular cycle up to ovulation and then the three days post ovulation are when you're the most fertile. Okay. Cool. And we've reached the ovulation phase. The ovulation phase, uh, before I start reading, is where my hormone balance normally just stays the whole time. Oh, fuck. It's fucking awful. <laughs> uh, the ovulation phase, this is the shortest phase, lasting 12 to 24 hours and occurs at the midpoint of the cycle. Increased estradiol levels causes the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone, which helps the egg mature. Once the egg is matured, LH triggers the follicle to rupture. This releases the egg into the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes are where the egg can be fertilized, leading to pregnancy. While ovulation only lasts 12 to 24 hours, pregnancy is most likely to occur in the three days before or after. And like specifically calling out estradiol there, that's that's the estrogen hormone that I take, which is why I'm constantly in this cycle. Huh. So, so the egg is held until it's matured. Yes. And then the follicles just like do they... Splits open. It, it, it's okay. just pop. Yep. It goes pop, and that pop is what allows for the small amount of propulsion necessary to get the egg to the fallopian tubes. Mm. And then at the end of the fallopian tubes, the the little fibrae or whatever those were called, mm -hmm. yeah, grab and move it down. Yep. So if that pop isn't enough, that's usually why you have ectopic pregnancies, right? That can be one reason. Okay. If it yes, doesn't... It can if it doesn't move enough to get into the tube. Sorry, Ray, this is supposed to be your part. <laughs> no, go ahead. You, go ahead, it's fine. So, uh, I don't know if you know, Ray. Um, fuck, time for questions after. I'll, I'm taking notes. You can ask a question. Okay. Um, is there a reason that three-day cycle is there, like the three days before and after? It has to do with where the egg is in the body. Go ahead. Oh. Um, like, by, like, reproductively speaking so that you're horny in the point of you're the most fertile and can carry a child like anatomically speaking it just depends on like how fast it's moved uh, it depends yeah. on how your hormones are changing throughout the rest of the cycle yes um when your hormones are at that peak level the the environment in your body is actually uh, is also more compatible with sperm so it doesn't kill them off as quickly, mm -hmm. allowing for them to get where they need to go easier. Huh. I'm pretty sure your body would kill off sperm. I just, ugh, before they even got out. Like, it's... Not gonna <laughs> risk it and find out. <laughs> Are we ready for the next? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have our luteal phase. This is this phase lasts an average of 12 to 14 days from ovulation to the beginning of your period. The follicle that ruptures during ovulation develops into the corpus luteum. The CL releases progesterone and estrogen, causing the uterine lining to thicken in preparation for pregnancy. Peak levels of progesterone and estrogen are reached mid-phase. Once the CL dies, if no pregnancy occurs, P and E levels start to drop. This triggers the body to restart the cycle. Oh, okay. So your period essentially is only because those hormones drop. Yes. Mm -hmm. If a pregnancy occurs, different hormones take over, and that's a whole nother process. But if there is no pregnancy, 
the levels basically dump. <laughs> okay. So I've, I've always like, I mean, I could have always Googled it, I guess, but I've never really had like a full explanation mm-hmm. of how this shit works. So I just know it works. Um, your estrogen, your serum estradiol, which is the estradiol in your blood, and progesterone kind of do like if you were looking at the chart, it would be one big hill and then a little bounce throughout the cycle. Okay. Yes. Um, at the point that you are like ovulating, your your body wants to be pregnant, that's where you're at the top of the big hill. And then you yes. crash, The your body starts being like, oh, we didn't get pregnant, you eat everything. And then your hormones go back up during that process and crash again at the beginning of the cycle. Yes. Rinse and repeat. And it's a bitch for everyone who has to deal with it. Yes. Until menopause. Even after menopause for a lot of people. Oh, yes. really? Yes. Um, menopause doesn't necessarily mean the end of the cycle. Like my great grandma, they had to um, have a specialist come in because they thought someone had sexually assaulted her. She was 98 years old and restarted having periods. Oh, fuck Ooh. that. Um, and even for not having the periods, a lot of people with menopause still have the hormone side of the cycle happening. Mm-hmm. Just not the oh, eggs and shedding lightning part. Right. Now, I do know like a lot of people that are, are undergoing like um, that are dealing with menopausal symptoms. They they take hormones, right? Like a lot of them. A lot of yes. people, not a lot of hormones. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of people do um, use hormone therapies to help stabilize, because when you're that unstable, it creates a whole hell of a lot of problems. Right, right. <clears throat> huh. Well, damn. We've got plenty of time, my love. You so didn't. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Last last slide, Mister. Oh, one more slide. Oh, there is. Ah, <laughs> I forgot there was like a cool slide at the end too. We got a, a slide of random facts about the menstrual cycle. PMS symptoms such as mood swings and bloating are very common, and unless severe, do not necessarily indicate health problems. While the average menstrual cycle is 28 days, length of cycles varies greatly from person to person. This can also vary based on stress, illness, or changes in weight. The first menstrual period is called the menarche. This typically occurs between ages 10 and 16, with the current average being 12.4. On average, menstruating people will experience over 400 cycles in their lifetime. Menopause marks the end of the menstrual cycle. The average age for this to occur is 51. Only an average of 2.7 ounces of blood is actually lost during the average period. Disposable pads first became commercially available around 1880. Huh. And modern tampons were patented in 1931 by Dr. Earl Haas. Um, and they haven't been improved since, have they? <laughs> no. Not really. <laughs> um, so interesting fact with the commercially available pads, they were originally based off of a design that was intended to stop or slow bleeding in wound- wounded soldiers. And it was adapted to all this shit. Which is kind of interesting because modern day, they've now adopted a tampon type thing for bullet wounds. Like it's kind of going full circle. That's pretty cool. I see Lav made some comments. Um, No Lav, unfortunately, you can't get away from the hormone cycle. You can get away from the menstruating part by having your... Y- uterus get the uterus. <laughs> I would like to uterus my uterus. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now something that women do face though, if you're if you're not like an approved person, doctors won't just give you a hysterectomy. That is correct. Unfortunately, some, some will, but um, there are lists out there on the internet that you can find of doctors, at least in the States, who will do it at, on an informed consent basis. So basically you have a consultation. They say, this is what's going to happen. It's hysterectomy is not reversible. Do you understand this? Sign this paper. Now, 
caveat to that, um, good luck getting insurance to cover those specific doctors. There are some, but not very many insurances that will cover it. Um, I was told by probably seven or eight different doctors that was I married, and had my husband's approval, it would be a lot less of a battle than me as a single woman wanting to be in charge of my own body. Well, let it be known that I'm anybody's husband that needs approval. Well, it has to be legal. That's so fine. When are we doing this? I'll marry you and divorce you after. Cool. We'll get we'll get it annulled like after. Just marry, do the surgery, get it annulled. Let's do this. I got this. And in a kind of interesting little bit of trans misogyny, I could also step into that role, having been assigned male at birth. Yes, you could. There you go. And you just make that would just make everybody uncomfortable, and that's more fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, what? <laughs> <laughs> so the first period. So like, so the average age is twelve now. The average age in the United States is 12.4. That's insane. And most of these young ladies don't know anything about this when they start. I mean, um, a- that's because most people related to like schools and this kind of education go, Ooh, I'm a gross old white man. Periods are icky. Pretty yes. much. I mean, um, they are a little icky. I mean, they are icky, but they're they're natural. They're really need to know. <laughs> they're messy and uncomfortable. They're not gross. They're just a thing your body does. And as far as like in schools go, it that is one of the things that has bothered me a lot. Like every, not even just humans, every living being that owns a uterus will more than likely menstruate at some point. Mm-hmm. It is not vulgar. Yeah. It, it's not. It should be it should be educated. It's just it, it's fascinating how little that's discussed. That's such a natural thing. I mean it's you it can't help it. A lot of information related to specifically to women's reproductive health has been considered taboo for a very long time. Mm-hmm. For sure. I have seen like some schools and stuff like Well, let's uh, figure out what the fuck happened there. Oh, no. It glitched the fuck out for a second. All right. Back to it. <laughs> Don't know what went there. It's done that a couple times before. Um, Probably gonna end up on. No, I'm like, probably gonna end up on Streamyard again, because Streamlabs is still glitchy and crazy. Just um, like OBS. Well, but I will. I that requires promise, a computer that can do it. Promise to do my presentation tomorrow. Nobody has to show up for it. It'll be streaming. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll just pop you up and let you do your thing. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm excited for it. Um. Technical difficulties, Rebecca. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. Like this thing does it all the time. But OBS requires a decent computer. Mine was like 120 bucks at Goodwill. So. Yeah, <laughs> I I get that. <laughs> so Moving we'll forward. get there. We'll get there. Mm. So there was something else. Oh, but what I was saying was like, so schools have some schools in more progressive states, obviously, have started to give out tampons and pads and have a, a place where, where kids can go get that stuff. And that's fucking great. I mean, that should, to me, that's one of those, if I can go to the health department and get condoms, shouldn't I be able to go to the health department and get pads and tampons? Mm-hmm. Now, the schools here, um, you actually have to have parental consent for them to give anything to a child like I had to sign a form in my kids before school stuff that allows them to be able to give them to them wow that was a I hope you <laughs> yeah but that. you you also live in DeSantis's nightmare so like right now I remember as a kid like we had to have a form signed for like Tylenol and, and stuff like that but now they're not even allowed to do that without a prescription 
at the schools here. They're fucking crazy. Can we just bugs bunny that whole fucking state, cut it off, and be done with it? <laughs> you get out of there first, obviously. Yeah. Periods are pretty Periods are. They're rough. Like, they are rough to watch sometimes. Like, I feel, you know, because they look painful as I'm fuck. I'm so grateful for the day and age that we live in with the things, the advancements that we have, medicines take. Um, I do hope that parents will do better at teaching their children what's going to happen to their body before it happens. Right. Unfortunately, until a lot of this is destigmatized, there are going to be a lot of parents that don't teach their children. It shouldn't be stigmatized. It happens to, I mean, I guess not everybody, but it affects everybody. Everybody poops, you know? It's one of those things. I mean, it's something you're going to experience at some point in your life. I, I read a story on Reddit two days ago where this girl was like, I broke up with my boyfriend because he wouldn't go buy me tampons. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Get a better boyfriend. Like, I call it, you know, she's like, I need them. Okay, cool. Somebody, if nobody has, but if somebody wants to make a remark about it, I sure as fuck will have something funnier to say, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I have the confidence to go buy products for my partner. Right. Wow, well, terrible. <laughs> I guarantee the ones that are more comfortable get laid more. Just saying. I guarantee it. <laughs> I'm going to call you one day. I'm going to go out there and I know they have large, regular. I'm going to ask you if you want your left, if you need the left or right. <laughs> I do believe that would be fun to watch. Just to watch people go, what the fuck? <laughs> it's for your left or right vagina. <laughs> Which one's bleeding this week? Right. And, and can I just say, I don't know, I I, I want to research awesome. it now, but I have to get ready for your yeah, you can go get ready for your shower. I need a shower too. I need to sleep. Um, yeah, you do. I know, right? You probably do smell me. I'm telling you, it's, it's been a rough couple of days. So I've been living here. a hobo life. Okay, let me let me sum up my past few days. All right. So I went back to work Thursday, worked until got home about two o'clock. She's got to get up at four. So no point in going to bed. I lay there. Time to get up. I might, I might doze off right before she wakes up. She wakes me back up about four 30. I'm usually in whatever I had on the night before because I come home tired. Don't want to, you know, I get up, take her to work. I can't come home because if I come home, I was telling you this. I was telling you this yesterday, Ray. Right? If I come home, I'm gonna go to sleep, and I'm not waking up. Like it doesn't matter. Like the house can fall down around me, and I'm not gonna wake up. So I'm sitting in this hot ass car all day. I don't have to, but I'm not gonna sit at her job. So I sit in this hot ass car all day, fucking off on my phone. Occasionally go drive around to get some AC. You know, pick her up from work, take her back home, and then go to work, rinse and repeat. For like the rinse past four days, there, but no rinsing. <laughs> it's been a rough few days, <laughs> so a shower is going to be very nice. I apologize to any of my coworkers that have had to be next to me. <laughs> I have at least been responsible enough to to take a whore bath and deodorize. So, you know, hit the airplane bath under the wings, hit the cockpit, and roll on. <laughs> proper hygiene with puberty absolutely so yeah her thing's gonna be cool she's talking about uh so what she's got coming up is this the physical and emotional changes in puberty and i could say she has definitely outshone me like i did my research and all but i didn't prepare my shit and like her she's got fucking phenomenal slides it's ridiculous you're about to look like the person i don't have any slides for the topic i was assigned for this week that's okay yeah that's okay and it was initially like we were going to do the individual presentations. Um, and yours, I was like, you know what? You you know your thing. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the problem is that my advice when it comes to gender identity and expression, which was the topic I was assigned, mm -hmm. is you do you. There is no correct gender identity or expression 
figure out what what you want to be, find somewhere safe to experiment. And then once you have your answer, have your answer. Be yourself. And if people don't like it, fuck them. Right. Or don't fuck them. Up to you. Uh, hopefully. If you don't use bottom. That's right. Or uh, um, barf controls. Check. IUDs for the win. I had a friend yeah. of mine text me the other day um, asking me. He was like concerned as fuck. IUDs not for the win. Fuck that shit. Okay. What? No, what's the <laughs> other thing called? IUDs? It like it should be from the dentist office. A dental dam? Yeah. <laughs> for those things. <laughs> Think if so I went I to a dentist office, I should, I should go to a dentist office and ask them if they, if they have dental <laughs> yeah. dams. I think I will. That should be my next TikTok video. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, but a friend of mine asked me the other day, you know I mean? Like, so IUDs do suck. They're probably the most painful thing that I've, I've from what I've been like watching videos on, reading on, stuff like that. When I say they are the absolute worst pain they have ever felt in their life. There's no kind of... Most of these doctors aren't using kind of any anesthetic and stuff like that. We'll, we'll dive deeper into that next week, but like that sucks. But it is effective if it works for you and not like if, rejected. If they are correctly placed and your body doesn't go, what the fuck is this shit? Mm -hmm. They can be very effective. And also if your partner is endowed in a way that doesn't conflict with where they're located. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can stab the head of your dick with the IUD. Mm hmm Because some of them have a little bit of little bit of copper that stick off of them. And it hurts like a bitch every time. <laughs> and it is also entirely possible for an IUD to like the string part of it to get snagged and rip it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've conquered enough sex at tonight, you guys. I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this hurts. Uh, that hurts. Oh, uh, and so this is what we're talking about next week, though. So is next, birth control. Next week It'll is on... STI testing, mm -hmm. birth control, and protection. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so, we kind of gave a little, yeah, a little teaser um, to all of that, didn't we? Just which now. is fantastic because Charlotte Pride is this week. We're going. So anybody watching this later, come get your spankings. Um, but there are a lot of places there that are doing a lot of information. So I plan on getting myself tested for HIV, showing how that process works, talking to a couple of people out there, you know, showing people how easy it really is. And hopefully we'll have some material that I'll have up and then it'll be up, you know, and maybe get some people to come listen and talk. And I'm going to be giving out flyers for all this stuff. So, so hopefully we'll have a, a turnout of some kind next week. Seven piece. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Oh, and the oh, word of the day is communication. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm but actually impressed say, we managed to make it 90 minutes, and I'm, I'm so a sorry, Ray. Point. Go ahead. A, just, just saying, uh, I, I priorly planned and prepped, and I, I still fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about my It's okay. So. I think um, for something as like that we should uh, have dress rehearsals i'm down if anybody's available like next sunday and want to do like a little run through because munch yeah. is definitely us or maybe we really could get together, together at nine if anybody's available it's kind of a quick run through sure. alice you just fall in place i mean you're the you're the fact checker love it <laughs> alice is the checker I'm good with it. Checks me, checks the facts. It's all good. It's just, checks and it's balances. That's right. Checks and balances. We, we run better than the fucking government does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Ray hey, froze, froze up. Froze, froze. It froze. I don't know she, oh, there, You're there. beautiful. Hi. <laughs> I mean, Tell me looking at messages. So, yeah, um, <laughs> so hopefully we we'll will have a, a bit of a crowd next week. I do. I think... You know, like I had planned on the, the individual presentations. I think the panel style still works. We're still able to discuss things and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The, so, I, mean, the, I, the, I don't think that the individual presentations were necessarily a good idea. Because, right. like, some of these things we can talk about for an hour, like anatomy. And then some of these things, like, I, that was the whole thing on gender expression identity was like 30 <laughs> seconds 
And I, I could not find a way to stretch that into 15 minutes like I was assigned. Yeah, because you pretty much killed it. Like 30 seconds was like, you do you. <laughs> there you go. That's how you know how to do gender identity and express yourself. Do what makes you happy. Oh, well, but that was what lunch is, is us learning how to be better people. talkers. I learned shit today, which is always nice. I learned that the prostate is not in the ball sack. <laughs> I'm going to kick you in your prostate. <laughs> Don't <laughs> try to have a good time. That's right. I learned about speed limits. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yes. I got to be able to squeeze my inappropriate jokes in somewhere. God, if I don't have at least one what the fuck comment a day, like an hour maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Good times, well, though. We really Anybody got closing thoughts? You got any closing thoughts on anatomy and just stuff? I was going to say that I really appreciate everybody being here and uh, our amazing conversations we always have. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> learn your anatomy and not just your own. Um, whatever person you're attracted to, whether they are a man, woman, non binary, penis, vagina, combination of both. Or neither. Or neither. Learn about them. And hopefully they have the respect for you to learn about your body. Because that's how successful sexual relationships happen. As you learn and understand each other. That's all I got. Alice, Ray? L learning about your body and other people's bodies and the possible configurations isn't just for good sex. Like you might have someone that's close to you who's having like legitimate health condition. And if they don't know their anatomy, you could in theory, help them understand things better or help them understand what their doctors are saying to them. Or I don't know. Sometimes it's just easy to make good jokes about body anatomy. If you know what, what's down there to joke about. Right. So my closing thoughts and typical me style, I'm going to bring it back to parenting. Um, a lot of how most of this can be destigmatized is by teaching it to our children. There is absolutely nothing vulgar about a child knowing the correct names for their anatomy. It's, it should not be looked down on for their own health at that point when it's not even time for it to be sexually related. It, it's a lot easier for, we'll say, a little boy to tell a medical professional what's going on. If they're just saying, like, it hurts down there, what does that mean? If they can tell you specifically, the end of my penis hurts, the doctors know where to look. <laughs> so teach your kids. Absolutely. Love it. Very good. 100%. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, Alice? We'll see you tomorrow. Alice? Yeah. Did you already go? Oh, you already went. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> That's all. Sweet dreams. <laughs> well, Thought I was in trouble there for a second. <laughs> well, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. We'll have an extended version yes. of this thing. Um, if any of you all want to show up, cool. If not, if you got shit to do, do your shit. Um, yeah, so, and we'll see the main topics of next week. Next week. Sounds good. Good night, everybody. Okay, bye. I get bye to now. go to sleep. I'm so excited.